groceries means you have money for groceries. The isolation, being broke and totally scared about what's next. I was feeling that before this crisis. People say we're in this together, but me, I've got no one. Youth who have aged out of the child welfare system are in danger of falling further through the cracks because of today's crisis. They need your support. Please give today at helpyouthnow.ca. It's that time of the year again. Santa and Mrs. Claus drop by for their annual visit to Rogers TV. You can ask Santa for what you want for Christmas by calling the direct line to Santa Tuesday, December 15th, 6 to 8 p.m. Call early because everyone wants to talk to Santa. The direct line to Santa, Tuesday, December 15th, 6 to 8 p.m., only on Rogers TV. Hey! <laughs> the lift wasn't working and he was in pain, so I tried to lift him on my own. Yes, it's bad. I'll need help. Can I help you with that? No, I'm good. Thanks. Workplace injuries hurt the most at home. It's about sharing. And caring. It's about doing. And belonging. It's about living life to its fullest. And it's about laughing out loud. We are L'Arche Canada, and we're about witnessing and sharing the gifts of all people. Learn more about us today. Everybody, my name is Jason Piercy, and this is Out of the Fog. So, it's almost Christmas. Let's face it, Christmas is super freaking awesome, but also super freaking expensive. And sometimes people get themselves in trouble spending too much on Christmas. Now, it might not be as big a deal this year on account of like not having so many parties and buying $500 worth of lamb's navy for all of your uncles uh, to come over and have just in case they pop by. That's our excuse, just in case. So tonight we're gonna talk to Mr. Sean Stack. He is a licensed insolvency trustee about how to prevent yourself from making some bad decisions and maybe what to do if in the past you have already made some decisions that didn't work out the way that you wanted them to, so how you can fix those things. And after that, you're definitely gonna wanna stick around because a couple of really lovely, high energy people who are passionate about helping others save money, they're gonna be around. We're gonna talk about their Facebook group, I Dies For Deals. There's gonna be some deals that dies for. All of that, coming up right after this. Stay tuned. This is Rogers TV. My wife, I want her to learn from you. Beautiful. It pleases me you've struck up a friendship together. I don't want to go back to the life I had before you. If you're Cinderella, come meet your Prince Charming. I thought I could come in and sweep you off your feet. Yes! Uh, uh, but you swept me off mine. I think I'm pretty good at this now. Oh. This is Rogers TV. Welcome back to Out of the Fog. Let me introduce you to a man who will save you from losing your house to the bank. Is that an opportunity? Hopefully, sometimes that happens. <laughs> Hopefully. This is uh, Sean Stack from SR Stack uh, and Company Limited. Uh, Sean, you're a licensed insolvency trustee. That's right. Okay, so what is insolvency? Insolvency, if we want to get into the definition of it, yeah. is uh, when you have at least a thousand dollars in debt, and either you can't make your payments on your debts as they come due, or the value of your assets is less than the total amount of your debt. 
So you're worth less than you owe. Or you can't make your payments. Or you can't make your payments, yeah. okay. And so insolvency is the state of not being able to make it work. And then for some people, not everybody, bankruptcy is also, is often a solution. Because yeah. in Canada, we sort of have that magic reset button. That's right. A little bit. Yeah. Um, and you're the person who processes that? Yeah, I, I'd be the person who would administer that, I guess, for lack of a better word. So the, the key or the, the typical solutions that individuals find under insolvency is bankruptcy or consumer proposal. Um, and they both had to be done through a trustee. Okay, so bankruptcy means basically you just say, we don't have this money, we're never going to have this money, um, this debt is just forgiven and this person um, endures the repercussions of that for however long and tries to pay back as much as they can, but you're getting what you're getting? Yeah, it's, uh, the, the Insolvency Act tells us exactly what, how it plays out. Um, what gets paid is based on what the individual or person's income is, as well as what assets they have. Is there any equity? And so, how much of the asset do they actually own themselves? Yeah. So, that, if you got like, if you owe a hundred grand to CRA, yeah. and there's two hundred grand worth of equity in your house, then the house could be seized, sold to pay off debts. Yeah. Or you might be able to work out some sort of refinance to get that equity out of the house, so you can still keep your house but deal with CRA at the same time. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. and. Just for context to the audience, the reason that I'm asking these questions to Sean is because we're going to get to how to not break the bank shopping for Christmas. But what I want you to understand before we get there, the context of why his advice is good advice. Uh, you also mentioned the term consumer proposal. What's that mean? That's uh, a situation where you're still insolvent but you have the income or the assets to allow you to make an offer to your creditors to try to settle on your debts or compromise your debts in order to avoid bankruptcy. Bankruptcy should really be the option of last resort yeah. when all else isn't manageable. So if I got like a half a dozen people that I all owe however much money to, and I know that I can pay a good portion of that back, I just, I'm not going to be able to do it all. And if they try to force me to pay it all off, I'm probably going to end up bankrupt. That's right. So like you and I can tag team the situation and make a pitch to them, say, listen, you can basically have this and you can all agree to have this or you're going to have nothing. That's right. Yep. And I mean, they, that sounds like a pretty good pitch. <laughs> they get the vote on it and they can ask for a counter offer, try to get a bit more out of you, which you then consider or not. And then if you don't reach an agreement with the creditors, then bankruptcy is still there as an option. Okay, cool. So, I mean, you help people then. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I've, heard, I've heard people refer to uh, insolvency trustees as being sort of opportunistic and kind of capitalizing on, like in our current market, right. here locally, I mean, after the global pandemic, the financial state of our province, job market, unemployment rate, the, all of these things, the cost of oil, things were in a really financially suppressed sort of not just, I mean, not just um, uh, a recession, but borderline depression in, in some ways. People are in a hard spot. Are you seeing a spike in your business? Haven't yet, no. That's good. Um, it was actually very slow through the summer. Uh, everyone had their payments deferred. CRA wasn't collecting. Municipal tax wasn't due. Uh, banks weren't collecting. So people didn't have to make those payments. The, the phone wasn't ringing anymore, so they didn't have that push to need uh, to come to see me. Okay, so before we get to the Christmas thing, if you are somebody who has been owing money, because I'm sure that somebody watching, I mean, I deferred my mortgage payment, so like I get, there's lots of people who are, who are in a spot, and those deferrals are over now, and it's time to start back on things, What's the advice for people who are coming out of that leading up into a holiday season where everybody tends to be, I'm not going to say too generous, because I don't think you can be too generous as long as you're not putting yourself and your family at risk. So mm -hmm. what's the advice moving forward? I think step one is to sit down and take stock of what your current income is. And now that things are becoming due again, what do you really have to pay monthly? You know, what is your income? What are your expenses? What can yeah. you afford? Yeah. Uh, and then as you're getting ready for the Christmas season, what expenses are coming up? You know, who do you have to buy gifts for? Who do you want to buy gifts for? Because sometimes those are two different lists. Yeah. Um, can you do, uh, what, what 
Christmas parties and stuff are happening this year, unlike most years, I think people won't have the expense that they've had in past years of the cocktail parties or the the potlucks and then the drinks and the taxis yeah. afterwards. I think there will be a savings there this year anyway. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I think the big expense that people find themselves in every year is the gifts. So, I mean, essentially a budget. Absolutely. Which sort of sucks a little bit because, like, you're looking at, like, your nieces and your nephews or your cousins or your brother and you're like, what dollar value do I place on how much I love this person? <laughs> Which is a bit, I mean, it's a bit hard to say, but it's sort of true. Well, I, I'd like to not look at it that way. I don't think we should be putting a material amount or a gift on the, how much we value our relationship with somebody else. We've, we've spoken a lot about what you do for a living, about what the process is, um, and about how, how moving into the Christmas season, some ways to avoid finding yourself in trouble is to sort of clearly outline what you actually do have to spend. So get an idea on what you have coming into your house and what has to go out. Yep. What do you do if those numbers don't add up? You take a deep breath, <laughs> first of all. Uh, and you see, first you have to look at why aren't they adding up? You know, what are you spending and where that you might not need to be spending? And then you need to start working on limiting those discretionary expenses that you might not have space in your budget for that you didn't realize you didn't yeah. have room for. Do people find themselves caught in a space between not understanding the difference between essential and non-essential because there's a lot of ego there? I don't know if we would call it ego. I think people don't really realize how much they're spending. And, oh, yeah. and then they haven't really considered or thought about what really is essential and non-essential. And in some ways, what's essential has changed over the years, too. When we were kids, internet and cell phones weren't essential. They basically True. are now. And yeah. in many budgets, that's two, $300 a month mm -hmm. that people weren't spending 20 years ago. Good point. Right? Uh, so what's essential and non-essential can change over time, too. But sometimes maybe you don't need the biggest cable package. Yeah. You don't need the cable package plus Netflix plus it whatever other Disney things Plus are. Disney yeah. and everything else, yeah. No. So while some of it might be essential if you have kids in the house and stuff, maybe yeah. there are places where you don't need all of it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, I mean, maybe you don't need two cars. Maybe. Maybe, I mean, it's really, really nice. But St. Like, John's is a tough city if you're used to having two cars to cut back. Yeah. But if you can, cars are a huge expense. And if yeah. you can limit the amount that you spend on your vehicle, then all the better for the rest of your life, really, budget budget-wise. It's a depreciating asset. You don't have anything at the end of the day when you're done with your car. Yeah. You have to insure it, you have to gas it. Okay, so quick, quick question about bankruptcy just as a thing. Sure. So let's just imagine that I owe more money than I can pay back just mm -hmm. because I've made some mistakes or I did like some investment in uh, a business opportunity that didn't go my way and because people can end up bankrupt for a million reasons. Like I got separated a couple of years ago. There's like, there's a lot of stuff there. So let's just say that somebody who's watching is on the verge and they've been thinking about it and Christmas is coming up and they have funds available sort of, but they're wondering what to do there. There has to be a law that says, if you know you are insolvent or about to be insolvent, you can't go spend $5,000 on a big Christmas knowing January 2nd you're declaring bankruptcy? Yeah, that's not a good look, really. <laughs> um, but there is a lot, actually. And one of the questions that I ask people is, have you made any significant purchases on credit in the last three months? Because if you're about to do a bankruptcy or consumer proposal and you went to Cuba last week on your credit card, that would be an issue. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so because you're actively trading in credit knowing that you, you, you can't or you shouldn't right. be. Yeah, okay, so I mean, don't do that, and I'm not gonna do it either. Luckily, we can't go to Cuba because I could really use the trip to Cuba. <laughs> uh, Sean, thank you very much for coming out. Thank you for the advice um, and taking what could be a really sobering conversation and making it a little more palatable. Thank you for having me anytime. Yeah. So if anybody's having a hard time, SR Stack and Company Limited will be right back after this. All right, girls. Uh, Mom, you said it's played again.
Workplace injuries hurt the most at home. Are you a woman experiencing abuse? Do you know a woman experiencing abuse? Help is available any time of day or night. Sheltersafe.ca is an online map that helps you find a women's shelter or transition house that meets your needs so you can live a life free from violence. Sheltersafe.ca. Help is just a click away. Welcome back to Out of the Fog. We're talking about um, how to not get lost by spending too much money and ruining the rest of your life. And we're also now going to talk about how to save money and make really good decisions leading up to and shopping for Christmas and all year round. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Lena Frampton, Alana Doucette from I Dies for Deals. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so I Dies for Deals is a Facebook group yes. uh, about discount online shopping. Yes. It's is mostly about deals <laughs> anywhere yeah. like um, we have members that if they see a deal in a store they do take a picture and then post to be like oh this Walmart wherever has this great deal but um, me and Lena share uh, Amazon deals daily like okay. discount like really good discount stuff like the best stuff we can find so how many people are in this group uh, 22,500 maybe around there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. over 22, wow. yeah. Like yeah. all local or are they all over the place? All over the place. Yeah, like mostly, Canada. yeah. mostly local, mm -hmm. but, um, but there are a lot of like, yeah, people from everywhere in Canada. Okay, so let's, because you guys have known each other a really long time. It's sort of yeah. a sweet story, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you've been friends for a very long Best time. Best friends, yeah. And, um, sorry, Best friends, Best sorry, friends. for a very Definitely. long time. Best See, now the problem is everybody that's watching this that is friends with each of you are just like, but I thought I was the best. Like, yeah, I, I that's exactly all. what's happening right now. You can have more than one best friend. That's true. People, yeah, that's relax. True. I think yeah. people know. Yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so yes. um, this started a while ago? Yes, it yeah, did. A couple of years ago. Yeah. Uh, when I was on maternity leave, um, I learned about couponing because Lena had added me to a couponing group and um, I decided to make my own. Wait, hold on now, what is couponing? Let's just go there. Uh, you can get coupons on Canadian web, like there's Canadian coupon websites and there's coupons in grocery stores. You'll see like random what we call tear pad coupons. Um, they're mostly what people use and couponers pretty much just take those tear pads when they see them and wait for a sale to come up in the flyers and then they go and use the coupon to get it like extra discounted. Okay, so, so the coupon is like a value, there, there's a value associated with whatever the coupon is for as yes. a discount, yes. either a dollar amount, a percentage, something like that. Mm -hmm. And that, that will often apply whether or not the product is at regular price or sale price. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, So yeah, if I have $5 right. off a $15 product coupon, Yep. And then the $15 product goes on sale 50% off. Now I have $5 off seven fifty, dollars right. And exactly. I got my $15 product for two fifty. Yes, that's like, exactly I'm that's amazing. When, <laughs> that's when you want to use it too, is when you say go into Dominion. Yeah. And like whenever we go into Dominion, we always look at the 50% off stuff. We scan like every aisle. And then you look to see if your coupons match up with that 50% off item because that's the best deal that you can get. And you leave the store feeling like, oh, should I like go back and pay we, more? Like, we have gotten, <laughs> because it's for free. Like, we've what? gotten many things free. Yeah, many things. so much. Like we've like, you know, get coupons and it comes to zero dollars. Yeah. And it's the best feeling. It's People so don't realize you can do that here in Canada, but you can. Yeah, it's, it's work. But it you is. can, yes. yeah. Is yeah. it worth it? Is it worth the work? Oh my yes. God, 100%, yeah. And it's yeah. such a community our group is, I find too. Like you meet, we've met so many good people yeah. and we try to, like we treat our Facebook group like a community and they're our friends and yeah. Definitely. And we remember people's names, like there's certain names, like we just, we yeah. recognize so many people's yeah. names now. So it's so, fun too, you know? Let, really let's fun. go back to talking about how this started. You say you were on maternity leave? I was, yeah. Um, so I was looking at different ways to, like save money because obviously when you're on maternity leave your income is slashed and plus you're spending way more money because now you got a kid to feed yes yeah, on diapers and formula so originally um i was buying this expensive formula for our son and um i realized that there were couponers trading coupons and one of the things was similac checks um that similac sends out so i started 
like trading for these checks. Okay, so and can I clarify something for a second? So a Similac check, you mean like the people at Similac want people to buy their product versus other other kinds of stuff. So they'll yes. like they'll send you like a, essentially a coupon that says this is worth one thing or whatever of Similac. Yes, that's right. And just to get you to like Similac and then buy their product. Yeah, or try different products, like okay. different kinds of Similac, you know. Yeah. Um, and other companies do it too, Infamil and whatever, but um, I ended up saving over a thousand dollars. Just in swapping just coupons in swap with people. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Holy cow. Mm. And then I guess you guys were like, well, why don't we make this a thing? Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to start teaching people yes. um, because I, I realized, like, so many people are like, but how do I start this? Mm -hmm. What do I do? Like, I have a coupon, so now what? Yeah. You know, I put it in my purse and it's gone forever. Yes. Um, so I felt like I, I, I love seeing other people save money mm -hmm. and I almost became addicted to seeing people save Interesting. money. It is addicting. So yeah. I started like being like, okay, so here's where the sales are, guys, and here are the coupons that you use, and here are where you get those coupons. And so now people are just look at it and they're like, okay, that's exactly what I have to do. And yeah. it's easy. So like <laughs> Lena, where did twenty two thousand people come from? So at first we had our couponing group solely for couponing here in Newfoundland, and then the pandemic happened. And the what? We, Sorry? The what? What? <laughs> what, is, what is that again? The pandemic happened and we know Dominion closed and went on strike and we weren't able to go into the store as much to use paper coupons. Actually, a lot of stores stopped taking them because of, uh, of the pandemic. So then we decided, how else can we like, help people save money? And we decided online shopping was a great way to do that. And people didn't have to leave their homes. It would go right to their door. So we just, and Amazon has a lot of great sales and they have coupons as well. So then our groups, we had a closed group for couponing. We opened it up and let people invite people in because we were a very tight knit community yes, at first. Yes, that's right. We were like family. And then we decided, you know what, we're going to let other people in and we'll show everyone that you can actually save online to save people from, from going out into the stores. So how many of those 20 something thousand people came like post pandemic? 15,000. Holy cow. Well, see. So it's like six months I ago. I actually had, yeah. yeah, I actually had the group set to secret. You yes. couldn't even find it in yeah. a search. It was invite only. Yeah. Um, and I did that uh, because I was working full time and all those people, it's hard to manage, oh, right? It's a full time job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so <clears throat> after, when the pandemic ha happened, we just opened the group so that people can start joining. And it just, it grew, it exploded. Okay, so. <laughs> The group functions in a couple of different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, as a member, say, I can, um, well, here's a good example. I, I really like Blundstones. Mm -hmm. I, I own boots. I own two pairs. They cost me over $200 each. I've had one pair for over 10 years, and I'm probably going on five years with these. Mm -hmm. So like, to me, that's a good investment in a pair of boots. Yes. Last year, they were at Costco for like 120 bucks. Mm -hmm. That's a smoking deal. Like, yeah, that's, really like that's a that's not like a hundred dollars yeah. off. Yeah. yeah. So, if that were to happen again, I could just walk in, take a picture, post it to the group, and be like, "I dies for this deal." Yeah. Like, seriously, right. buys. Yeah. Like and and for sure. and I could do that, and then other yeah. people take advantage of me having noticed that. Yeah. But you mentioned the Amazon thing. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Yes, so with Amazon, something that Alana and I have become really good at is finding price mistakes. So um, I'm after finding price mistakes on Hunter Boots. You know, like they don't- Price mistakes? Like price they're mistake. advertising it incorrectly on the exactly. site? Exactly, like they might have a mis- Yeah, like mistakenly <clears throat> put in a- Or it's just like a random there. like price drop. Yeah, design. or price drop. Mm -hmm. and, and once it gets bought up, like I actually find a lot of Sperry Boots. Yep. And I just, yeah, I find them, and normally they're priced at about $120 to $150, and I find them and uh, dr price dropped, and then I put it on, and once someone buys them, then the price goes back up. Yeah. Like, the, it's fixed. And the we do that for fixed. all, like, like high brands like Columbia, yes. Calvin Klein, Adidas. Like we do we all, don't. like we find price mistakes for all those. Yes. Okay, so when that happens, let's say, like are these Sperry boots you're wearing right now? Uh, no, these are actually the DLG boots that we found had a $20 coupon, so. Okay, so but, but that's where you got them. So. That's okay. where we got them, yeah. So you see something, yes. and you know it's a price mistake. Mm -hmm. Do you go to your group and do like a bulk order? 
No. For every, okay, because if no. you do, if you just buy one, they notice the problem and fix it, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. So how do people get to take advantage only, of it like, like that? Like only a few people get in. Because like, it's fast. It's fast. It's fast. The price ah. will change within like 10 minutes or so. So only a few people get in. So that's like we have people checking the group all day long. Yeah. Like they don't want to wow. miss. They it's don't want to miss it. Yeah. yeah. And okay. we, it's so fun too. It is. I bet. Okay. So now be, before we clue up, let's mm -hmm. talk about people who are, because as much as I, I would love everybody to just go walk through downtown and buy their stuff locally and support local businesses, but it is, there is a health risk associated with that. So if you do just right now, because this, whatever that pandemic thing you mentioned is, mm -hmm. um, on account of that, online shopping right now makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So what advice do you have for people? Just a couple of little tidbits about how to get good deals when you're shopping online. Yeah, so I would say if you're shopping online, definitely go to the sale tab first and then sort from low to high. Like price from low price to high? Price low to high or discount high to low. Okay, yes. yeah. What else? Um, I would recommend looking at, uh, you can get a couple of flyer apps like Flip or Rebe. And if you're looking for, say, um, a slow cooker, uh, you could search it online, but then also look in your local flyers and see if it's cheaper elsewhere because sometimes local stores might have it cheaper. And, and like I guess sometimes local stores might match advertised prices elsewhere. Yes, sometimes? Um, no frills, price matches yeah. still. Yeah, no Walmart yeah. does not anymore. but. <laughs> Yeah, and Canadian Tire does too, but the store has to not have it in stock. Yes, it's a bit yeah. more complicated. Ah, but, uh, okay, so yeah. do we have any other advice? I know that, like, on, on the the laptop that um, I used to share with my ex-wife, so there would there would be this thing called Honey. Is Honey a thing? It's like a like a, an for extension. For promo codes? Yeah. Maybe, or yeah, like for discount codes or something. We don't really use that much, but because our group is so big, Amazon sellers actually contact us and give us discount codes. So. Oh my goodness. Of, yeah. So yeah. just by going. So, so they just reach out to you and they be like... They reach out to yes, us, yeah. Because yeah. we're, like, they're benefiting from us promoting their product, so they'll give us a 50% off discount code. Okay, all right. Yeah. My mind is blown. <laughs> um, okay, thank you both so thank much for, for coming out. Thank you. Um, greatly appreciated, Lena, Alana. Um, you're, you're both just so lovely. <laughs> uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, go to I Dies for Deals. Facebook group, exclamation point on the end of that, and join, right? You'll take a few more? Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah. Amazing. We love people definitely. saving money. That's right. <laughs> Get some great deals on Christmas, and uh, we'll be right back after this. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Out of the Fog. Okay, so. Tonight's episode, we talked about how sometimes through no fault of our own, we find ourselves in difficult financial situations. However, we can prevent either things from getting worse or from getting ourselves into them to begin with. So that's sort of what Sean Stack was talking about. And he gave us some advice on things that we can do to prevent those things from happening. Now, listen, if you're watching this, you got Rogers, so you can rewind it and you can listen again. After that, we spoke to Lena and Alana about ways that we can make really good decisions moving into Christmas to get really good deals on things, because everybody likes a good deal. And not only do we like a good deal, we like saving money. And we like saving money because it makes us better able to support and keep our family safe and healthy and happy. Speaking of people who need to be safe and healthy and, healthy and happy, Let's spend as much time as we can this holiday season shopping local. They can still deliver to your door. You can still buy it all online. They're here to help. So are we at Rogers TV. Have a great night. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media.